Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out the very first episode of the Aaron Advantage Podcast Live. Today, I'm going to be sitting down with Dusty Wilhite with Farm Bureau Insurance. Uh, she wanted to, she wanted to get on here and kind of talk about uh, who she is, what she does, and some of the things that people don't realize they need to know when they're looking for homeowners or even auto insurance. So, uh, check out this episode. Let me know what you thought. Okay, so obviously we're here for the very first episode of the Aaron Advantage Live. We are live on my Facebook page over here. Uh, we're also recording video to try to go ahead and get this edited and uh, put out in clips and stuff and all that fun stuff on my YouTube channel. Uh, so bear with us today because this is the first time. We're going to be excited to see how this works, if this works, and uh, all that fun stuff. So uh, today with me is Dusty Wilhite with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. How are you doing today, Dusty? Hey, I'm good. How are you, Aaron? Uh, so far, so good. It's pretty early in the morning. It's so, very early. Uh, I was up early enough to get to the gym this morning. I thought maybe it would warm up and that hasn't happened. No. So that's but, awful. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, today, uh, specifically, what I want to do is just kind of get to know you a little bit more, uh, kind of show people what there is to know about the home buying process, the insurance process right. and things that they don't even think about when they come to me the first time and say, hey, I'm thinking about buying a new house. So right. uh, first and foremost, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, kind of how you got into insurance? OK, so I've been doing insurance for over 10 years now. Um, I have three kiddos. Um, 13, nine, and one up at Ball State that's 22. So they all keep me very busy. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the part, how I got into insurance. Gosh. So I used to do mortgages, right? Right. I saw the housing bubble happen probably before anyone else did because they were letting us do blank loan applications basically with someone's <laughs> name. Stated income. Stated income. Right. Address. Do you have a pulse? Great. You're getting a loan. So I was like, oh, we cannot keep doing this forever. This is going to be bad news. Right. So I started looking. I'm like, okay, what are the things that people absolutely have to have? <laughs> and let's go down that, that yep. route. So I was like, okay, so people are going to die. So right. let's look at funeral sales or something like right. that, right? That's where my mind went first. Right, right. So everybody's going to die. Um, and then, you know, everybody has to have car insurance or some kind of insurance. Right. So I was like, you know, let's, let's just knock out the funeral thing first. So I went and interviewed at a funeral home. Gosh, it was, it was Sad. rough. No, no. So the guy that interviewed me looked like Guido. <laughs> he had slick back gel hair. He had pinky rings. He had gold necklaces. I was like, Ooh, what's going on here? And then his top sales per his per top salesperson looked like Mimi from the Drew Carey show, <laughs> like blue eyeshadow. And so we were sitting in this conference room, and behind them were was his dry erase board with all these numbers on it. And I'm like, oh, so there's more to the the funeral industry than just oh, I'm sorry you passed away, right. I'm sorry family. They're, I mean, it's the real deal. It's a sales job. Gotcha. So something here, you would never think about. No, I wanted to help people, right? In right. their time of need and oh, no. This so, is the hard push. Yes. Yeah, they're emotional. This is the easiest time to sell them something, right? Right, yeah. right. So she asked me, um, how would you feel about chasing ambulances? I was like, oh, I don't feel good about it at all. Not not happening. So that's a real thing people do. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then she's like, okay, well, how do you how do you feel about spending hours sitting in ERs waiting for people to pass away? And I'm like, yeah, I have way too much integrity to to do those kinds of things. I go, so I think we're done. Right. So I, you know, scratched funeral off my list. And so the next thing was insurance. So that's how I actually got, in, got started in insurance and the rest is history. Very nice. So yeah. ha have you been with Indiana Farm Bureau the entire time you've been in insurance? Yep. Awesome. The whole time, yeah. So about, about a decade with them. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. I started at the west side for a few years, and then I moved up to, to Gibson County. Very nice. Yeah. So at this time, I will say, if you are watching on the live stream, feel free to leave us comments or questions that you might have. Uh, I do have my man behind the camera watching the comments. Uh, Scotty Biggs, he hates being shouted out. He hates even more to be on camera, so we let him stay off that today. But uh, if you got anything that you want to know, please let us know in the comments. Um, so, uh, you know, buying a house and mm -hmm. uh, getting insurance go hand in hand. If right. you're getting a mortgage, you have to have insurance. Right. You would think that for a guy like me, that would be a real 
really easy referral, but I find that people come to me and they say, oh, I've already got my insurance taken care of. I'm just going to use what I've had, right. what my parents have had me on forever. Right. Is that something that you would recommend? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend that, great, go talk to mom and dad's insurance agent and have a conversation with them. But not all insurance agents are created equal. Right. So, you know, if they just take down some information and just throw you a quote without asking you information about the home that you're buying, it's a big red flag. Yeah. So get get in at least another quote so you know if that person is in line or not. Right. Now, not only are not all insurance agents created equal, but all coverage is not created equal either, is right, it? Right, right. No, absolutely not. So... You know, there's there's all kinds of different coverages, different percentages of coverages. So you really need to have somebody that knows what they're doing, because at the end of the day, we're protecting your most valuable assets. Right. Right. So if we make a mistake, even if it's a small mistake because we didn't ask the right questions. That's that's a financial hardship on you. Yeah. Not me. So our jobs are extremely important. Yeah. And a lot. another thing that a lot of people don't even realize is when they're going in, they're getting their quotes for their homeowner's insurance. They mm-hmm. just think, oh, I just need that taken care of. They don't even think about, well, what if I bundle other stuff together right. like my auto and all that? Does that actually have an impact? Oh, it's huge um, for Farm Bureau. And I mean, it's different with every company. Right. But with Farm Bureau, it's, it's 18 to 20 percent discount on your home. Oh, so man. it's huge. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. And I understand that people are stressed out at that time. They're like, oh, we'll worry about that later. Right. But it's easier. To, let's just knock it out right now. Let's just get it taken care of and take it from there. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Now, you mentioned something a second ago about, uh, you know, make sure that people ask questions about your home and different right. things like that. You know, we live in an area where we have a big diversity of mm-hmm. construction. We've got people who have slabs. We've got right. people who have basements, crawl spaces, all those things. Uh, what's the one thing that kind of comes up that many people don't realize that they may need in their insurance coverage that if the agent's not asking them the right questions, they might come up with problems right. down the line. The biggest question, if your insurance agent doesn't ask you, do you have a sump pump? Then you're in trouble because if we get the big rains like we've been having right. and you have a sump pump, it stops working. Guess what? Your basement's going to flood and you're going to get so much water in that basement and it won't be covered. That's it, not automatically covered? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's an endorsement. So yeah, you definitely need to make sure that they're asking those questions about your basement. How often do you have to tell people that they're not covered because they didn't get that endorsement? Not very often because if they have a sump pump, they're getting it. If they're mine, I'm right. like, you're, you're getting it. Because even the average, I would say, water remediation can be $2,500. Man. So unless you have $2,500. So extra cash laying around? around? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you need the endorsement. Yeah, so good Good yep. point. Um, you know, that's uh, that's going to lead me into the next thing that I always like to kind of ask about. You talked about the claim for the water remediation. Everybody's seen the commercials. Mm-hmm. You've got, you know, what, the moose in the pool, the flaming right. she shed, all that fun right. stuff that people show online. Yep. What are some of the craziest claims you've had to deal with? You know, one that actually has always taken the cake for me is this guy had enough presence of mind to schedule his dentures on his homeowner's policy. Now, this was something that I inherited. So this was not something that I did for them, but I ended up, you know, having to deal with a claim. He was on his riding lawnmower and didn't realize, I I guess he didn't realize that his dentures had fallen out. Okay. How do you not notice that? I don't know. I don't know. He ran over his dentures with his riding lawnmower. And so since they were scheduled on his homeowner's, we paid for a new set of dentures. Very nice. I was like, ooh, when he called, I'm like, ooh, how'd that happen? <laughs> you know, we see riding lawnmowers, you know, going into lakes, those kinds of things, because, you know, those things start to slide. Right. And, and they can't stop them. Not much you can do, but no, bail, no. get yeah, off that thing. Right, You're right. Yeah, you said something about having them, those things scheduled on your homeowners. I know that a lot of people kind of overlook getting their jewelry right. or their watch collections or things like that. Mm-hmm. Are those things, like if you're buying something that's a large expenditure that yeah. you want to talk to your insurance agent about? Oh my gosh, absolutely. I have a guy who has his bourbon collection I need scheduled. to meet. I need to meet that guy. Yeah, you might already know him. <laughs> um, you know, jewelry, guns. Guns is huge right. around here, right? So let's schedule your guns. Um, you know, any we do um, hearing aids. We'll schedule hearing aids on homeowners. So if there's a question about, I don't know, do I want it insured? How much is it going to cost? Just call your agent. Say, hey, 
what's it going to cost to put this on my homeowners? Very nice. Yep. Um, another thing that always comes to mind for me for insurance is not just uh, the stuff that you have to do for claims and different mm -hmm. things like that. You know, I, I make a video a series all the time about crazy stuff in real estate, right. the things that people don't realize. What are some of the crazy kind oh of like appointments gosh. you get to deal with? Because I'm, I'm assuming like if people are coming to you and say, hey, I, I need to get this stuff scheduled and all this stuff. You right. got other people who are calling just like, hey, I need your ideas on this. And they just hit you with something way out of left right. field. Right, right. So, um, recently on the left field thing there, we have, I have a client who's going to open up this LLC and start raising quail. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he calls it game birds. And I'm like, well, what's a game bird? Right. Cause I'm, I'm assuming that's what it is, but I'm not going to assume anymore. Right. So right. I ask the questions and then they ask her like, well, you're really asking that question. I'm like, I don't, I don't assume anymore. Um, so yeah, that was one. I'm like, okay, so we're going to raise quail. Then what are we going to do with them? Right? Legit goes, question. Right. So I guess these hunters buy them, they set them loose, and then they go hunt Okay. these quail. So that's probably the most recent thing that someone's called me and said, hey, we're doing game birds. I'm like, game bird? Okay. I'm like, who's your competition? <laughs> <laughs> Mother Nature? And he's like, there's no one that does I know that, of that does, does that. Does that take kind of the game out of it if they're like raised specifically to be hunted? Yeah. Aren't they like just more docile in that's nature? What I, that's what I would thought. I guess they, he's releasing them between 16 and 18 weeks. Okay. So I don't know. So he's just like hatching them and getting them and then putting them out in. Right. Got, so okay. I'm not an expert on a game bird field. So I was asking lots of questions and he probably thought that I was just being ridiculous. But I'm like, I got to know. <laughs> right. That, I mean, I would have had no idea what to even think right. about that. Right. Uh, so yep. um, those are the biggest questions really that I have about, you know, stuff that I don't mm -hmm. think people think about when they're talking right. about their insurance. Is there anything that you think is like important for people to know that not even I have thought about that maybe right. you you think they should think about when they're looking at, mm -hmm. you know, either buying a house or maybe it's just getting reevaluated from time right. to time. Right. You know, the biggest thing is just make sure that you know what your coverages are before your loss actually occurs. Right. So a lot of insurance agents will call you every couple of years and be like, hey, we really need to review your policies. Please do that because we go over things and things might change on our end or they might have built a pole barn and forgot to tell us that they built. And that's happened. Wow. We're like, hey, Dusty, where's my pole barn? And I go, what pole barn? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we built a pole barn. So we just have open conversations. You know what coverages you have. Um, I get to ask lots of questions. And then we know, I know, and you know, that if there's ever a loss, you're taken care of. Right. We're done. We both get to sleep at night. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah. um, anything else that you want to share with anybody today that you think is important on how they can find you yeah. or where they can contact you? So you can find me um, pretty much anywhere, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Farm Bureau, you can just Google it. Um, my cell phone number is 812-893-1657. Call me, text me. I know a lot of people are texting now. Um, so yeah, you can reach me that way, whatever questions anybody has. All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming out today. Uh, thanks so much for being the very first guest on the yeah, Aaron Advantage Podcast Live. Yeah. So uh, thanks for tuning in on Facebook Live. We really appreciate anybody who's been here to watch. And let me know in the comments below anybody else you want to see on here. Or if you're a business owner and you're interested in being on yourself, you can hit me up on Facebook, tweet me at Aaron Advantage, or give me a call or text at 812-779-6273. Have a good one.